Hello everyone, welcome. This is Steve Suffoletto. I'm an adjunct professor at SUNY State University of New York at Erie. We were formerly known as Erie Community College or ECC. We're a two-year junior community college and we have a program in printing graphic arts. Today's presentation, I want to talk to you about how you calculate density with filters. So if we take a look at the title of this graph here, I'm saying that if you take a process color ink, cyan, magenta, and yellow, and you look at it through a particular filter, red, green, and blue, you can calculate its density. So this graph here on the horizontal bottom axis has wavelengths of light, visible light, from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. Below 400 nanometers is ultraviolet UV and above 700 nanometers is infrared IR, thermal heat energy. By the way, a nanometer is the wavelength of light, and a nanometer is one billionth, would it be one billionth of a meter, so 10 to the minus nine. Now from 400 to 500 nanometers is generally blue, from 500 to 600 nanometers is generally green, and from 600 to 700 nanometers is generally red. Notice where blue and green combine, you get cyan, and where green and red combine, you get yellow. On the vertical axis to the left is percent light. Now, it can be percent light transmission, transmittance, or it can be light percent light reflection. So all you need to know is that this is less light and this is more light. So let's take a look at cyan. So process color inks are transparent filters. They transmit two-thirds of the light and they absorb one-third of the light. In the case of cyan, cyan is transmitting blue and green but absorbing the red. When we look at magenta, magenta is transmitting the blue and the red but absorbing the green. And yellow ink is transmitting the green and the red but absorbing the blue. Process color inks are transparent filters that transmit two-thirds and absorb one-third. Now, if we want to look at density, we want to use a filter that is the complementary opposite of the ink. So where the ink absorbs light, we want the filter to transmit light. If the ink is absorbing one-third, we want that filter to be transmitting light in that same one-third. Here is cyan ink reflecting blue and green for cyan. So here is a Kodak Rattan 25 red filter. It is transmitting the red. So what we want to do is have a signal to noise ratio. We want to maximize the wanted signal density and filter out or minimize the unwanted noise. Because density is darkness, D for density, D for darkness, we want the filter to transmit where it's absorbing the light. So these are opposites or complements. It's kind of like the piece of a jigsaw puzzle. They fit together perfectly. So here is the magenta green. Again, magenta transmits or reflects blue light and red light. It absorbs the green light. So we want to have a filter that allows light to pass where the ink is absorbing. So this is a Kodak Rattan number 58 filter. And here is an example of yellow ink. So yellow ink is reflecting or transmitting light in the green and red area, absorbing it in the blue. So we want to have a filter that reflects or transmits the blue light. Now there is a special case here. We have what we call status T densitometry. And status T densitometry is 47 blue, 58 green, 25 red. However, there is also a status E filtration, E for Europe, where they use a narrower band. Uh, status T densitometry is about 100 nanometers wide, their wide band filtration bandpass. So the status T, the status E filter, 47B, lets less light in, and because it lets less light in, it'll have a higher density. And then I also just wanted to show you three other filters that are commonly used. We have these neutral density ND filters. So when you have a neutral density filter of 0 
it absorbs or transmits 50% of the light. So if you follow this line across, you can see that a 0 0.30 neutral density filter would transmit 50% of the light. Now, densities are additive, so if I added two filters on top of each other, a 0.3 and a 0.3, that would add up to 0.6. So that would be half of 50%. That filter would be down here somewhere around 25%. Now, two specialty filters, there's a 2B filter. This absorbs UV light, so it filters out or cuts out the UV light. And there's an 18A filter that allows only the UV light to pass through. And then here's a composite of all the filters and all the inks. Now, I've been in the industry for over 40 years, and I remember the early days of basic densitometry. People like James Cox at COSAR and Phil Tobias at Tobias. I remember the COSAR SOS 40 that had a manual filter turret on it where you actually had to switch the filter for the desired ink. and You could actually pull that filter turret out and replace it with custom filters. Obviously, modern densitometers today are people like Macbeth, Greg Tag, who merged and then was bought out by x right and then, of course, Teshcon and Ahara. Now, in the early days, densitometry was invented for photography so that you could do sensitometry to study the photographic emotions. So, 1830s, when photography was invented, in the early 1900s, 1920s, 1930s, we saw densitometry being used in the graphic arts printing industry. Let's not forget the difference between the applications here. Densitometry or, or density is still a very fine metric to use for process control, controlling the printing manufacturing process, which is basically ink film thickness or IFT. So generally, the thicker the ink film thickness, the higher the density and the thinner the ink film thickness, the lower the density. Now that's not true in all cases, but that's a general relationship. Now what happens if you want to measure an ink that is not a process color ink, namely cyan, magenta, and yellow? Well, now you're getting into spot colors or the Pantone PMS colors, and a general rule of thumb there is you want to use the filter that gives you the highest density. Now, the modern densitometers allow you to make a custom narrowband filter for that density response. Measure the spectral curve, find its deepest valley at the absorption, which is its highest density, and then you use a custom narrowband filter to report the density there.